If you were trapped in a multi-dimensional death game where anything can happen, what would you do? I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat every death game in Die Now. This girl is going to play in a death game that defies physics. Ching Jiu here is returning from Drama Club and discovers a mysterious letter has been sent to her. Reading it, the girl realizes that it's been written by a famous murder victim named Ji Lu and drops it in shock. But soon, she'll be forced to survive eight deadly challenges. Meanwhile, her boyfriend is hanging out in his dorm room when he suddenly gets a call from his girlfriend. Taking the phone, the kid answers it and she sounds terrified. The girl explains that someone sent her the murder victim's famous letter and begs him for help before the connection suddenly drops. Worried, the boy runs out of the room and heads for her dorm, but as soon as he walks inside, he realizes something is wrong. All of her belongings have disappeared and nobody remembers who she is. It's like the girl never existed and the boys are shocked, but that's when the kid has an idea. That night, the boys visit the friend's uncle, who is an investigator in the famous murder case, and they ask to examine the victim's original letter. Inspecting the evidence, they find a strange black card and a paper with a sequence of numbers on it. The kid knows these are all connected and takes photos of the objects before leaving the building. The students head back to their dorm rooms, but the boyfriend stops as he realizes how to break the code. Writing the sequence out into the air, he discovers that every third number combines into a nine-digit phrase that when decoded into English letters, spells out die now. Suddenly, a portal appears in front of them and realizing the girlfriend is inside, the boys walk through. But they have no idea that the kid is about to risk his life in a physics-breaking death game. They find themselves in a massive spaceship where this strange woman welcomes them to a death game called Die Now. The boys don't know what's going on, but she notices that they aren't members and walks over to the middle of the room to create a VIP card. It looks identical to the one they found in the case files earlier, and they realize that this is somehow connected to the murder. He asks if they've kidnapped his girlfriend, but the woman can't reveal who the other players are. It's clear they're keeping the girl trapped, and the kid demands they set her free. But there's a problem. The girl can only be released if she beats the game, and that could take years. But if he agrees to play, there's a chance he can meet her whenever he wants. With no better options, the kid decides to enter the tournament to save his girlfriend's life. Okay, these guys are f idiots. They were clever enough to decipher a code that was too difficult for the police to figure out, and it only took them five minutes to solve. The problem is that they didn't even bleed twice at the fact that the solution says die now. This is a huge red flag, because it clearly means walking through this portal will probably get you killed. Even if your girlfriend is Kim Kardashian, this is just not worth the risk, and if we're being honest with ourselves, finding a new girlfriend might just be the best decision we have. If I saw the words die now hovering in the air before an interdimensional portal opened opens up, there's no way I'm stepping inside. But there's one idea that could have made this a lot safer to explore. If it were me, I would have told my friend to wait here while I get a long rope. Then, I would tie it around his waist so there's a lower risk of him getting trapped inside. This way, he might feel comfortable enough to walk through the portal and record video of everything he sees for evidence. If something bad happens, we can use the rope to pull him back out and take the video recording to the police so they believe our story. Now, you might be thinking that a video could easily be dismissed because they wouldn't be able to distinguish visual effects from real life. But there's a great way to prove what they're seeing is real. In order for this portal to work, it has to bend the space-time continuum to bridge two different locations in the universe and this is known as an Einstein-Rosen bridge or a wormhole. Fortunately, one of the consequences of this is that it makes time flow at different speeds because the faster you move through space, the slower you experience time. And that's exactly what we could use to our advantage. If our friend steps inside to record what he sees while we wait outside and record him entering the portal, his video will be for a much longer duration than our video and when he comes out, the footage will prove that we are recording the exact same event but with completely different times. Going to the police station with a story this crazy would not go over well, and that's why it's a wiser decision to find the safest way to explore the portal, collect evidence, and return before things get too deadly so someone else can save our girlfriend. Unfortunately, these idiots didn't put any thought into how dangerous this would be, and now they're trapped in a death game. Suddenly, he's teleported to a strange room with two other university students, and all of them are new. That's when a voice introduces itself as the Game Master, explaining that they will have to go through four different challenges, and whoever beats them all will get six points, while failure will only give them one. The kid is certain there's something being hidden from them, and soon he'll discover this game has something to hide. With everyone up to speed, the players are introduced to their first challenge. The goal is to remove one square from a 49-grid rectangle, but they're only allowed to divide it into a maximum of six pieces. 
they have 20 minutes to complete the challenge, and if they fail, they'll all be eliminated. Suddenly, a sheet of paper appears on the table behind them, and the group examines it as fast as they can, with no idea how to solve the puzzle. Getting impatient, the nerd starts to cut the paper, but that was his biggest mistake. Suddenly, a row of lasers shoot from the floor, splitting the room in half, and the players are shocked as they watch the sheet repair itself. The group realizes that every mistake will cause more lasers to activate and get them killed. Worried, the girl tries to take the paper from the nerd, but she accidentally rips it, activating another set of lasers. They've managed to dodge them at the last second, but it's not over. That's when an alarm goes off and the kid pulls the girl out of the way as more lasers appear. Their timer has already gone down to 15 minutes, and if they don't solve the puzzle soon, they'll be sliced to shreds. With no time to waste, the group analyzes the puzzle, and the boyfriend suddenly has a brilliant idea. He's about to cut the paper when the nerd slams his hand down to stop him. Terrified, the man insists that the puzzle is impossible to solve and takes the sheet, scared that this will be a deadly mistake. That's when they hear another alarm go off, and the players throw themselves to the ground as more lasers split the room in half. Desperate to escape, the girl hands over the paper, and the kid begins cutting it into pieces, rearranging them into a square with an empty tile at the center. The others are amazed, and they've just beaten the first game, making that one challenge down with seven more to go. Okay, this is insane. Anytime the paper was ripped or cut, lasers would slice through the room and limit the space they have to operate in. It's terrifying. But there's one detail here that doesn't make sense. First of all, this guy was able to cut five pieces out of the paper without any lasers appearing. But when the nerd here made one single cut, it nearly killed them. Now, you might think it's because there's only one right answer. But if you compare the solution to the line that the nerd made, you can see that it would only require one extra cut to be an exact match. The rules stated that you have to Solve the puzzle in six pieces or less, but punish the nerd for a cut that still could have found the solution. It's completely unfair, and that means there's something more to this game than we realize. The fact that the boyfriend was allowed to make his first cut without the game master knowing if he would solve it demonstrates a clear favoritism, and with this in mind, it's very likely that this entire room was designed specifically for him to solve and no one else. This is why it's absolutely crucial that whenever you find yourself in a death game, you have to assume there are hidden rules that the game hasn't exposed to you yet. The best strategy to have in a situation like this is to make sure you test the boundaries of the game so that you know exactly how to take advantage of them. For example, when the nerd made the first cut, it split the room in half. But instead of assuming we understand the scenario, it would have been wiser for each player to cut a small piece of the edge to see how the game responds. This would give them more information to evaluate safely, and if they did this, they would have realized much earlier in the game that the boyfriend was the only person allowed to make a cut. Now, you might be wondering how in the death game hell, he managed to create a missing square without removing anything from the grid, and the answer might surprise you. The truth is, there is no missing square because this is actually an optical illusion. Both the original paper and the final answer have the exact same length and width, and no squares were removed or thrown away. But the reason this works is because of these two pieces right here. If you look at the top, there are two triangles that are joining together along this piece above. Since they were made from the same cut, it's reasonable to assume that both of these triangles have the same angle, but they actually have a slightly different degrees. When the pieces are switched around, this one small change actually stops this shape from being a triangle, because if the larger angle is now on this side, it becomes a quadrilateral. That means there are four sides, and it's enough to change the geometry below to make room for an extra square. This is known as the dissection puzzle, and the kid realized he can find the answer by cutting diagonally, because the only way to create enough of a gap is to use the angles of two different triangles and reorganize them. The doors suddenly open to the next level, and the players enter a different room divided by jail bars. In this game, they must hit the bullseye within 15 minutes if they want to move on, or else they'll be eliminated. That's when the lights shut off, and the nerd tries to find a way to break through the bars, but it's useless. Looking around, the kid finds something on the ground, and the nerd recognizes that it's a gun barrel. He realizes they need to assemble the gun before time runs out, and the group spreads out to find the pieces. Gathering them up, the nerd quickly assembles them together and takes aim. With 12 and a half minutes left on the clock, he fires the bullet and it hits the bullseye dead center. The other players are shocked at his accuracy, and the doors open to the next room, making that two challenges down with six more to go. Continuing on to the next level, they approach the screen and are told they must figure out a password based on the sequence of numbers. They have 10 minutes to complete the task, and will be eliminated if they fail, but something doesn't feel right. That's when the kid realizes that each player had the specific skill set needed to pass the previous puzzles, and the only person
person who hasn't demonstrated their own talent is the girl. Curious, he asks what her major is in college, and she reveals it's music. It immediately becomes clear to him that the numbers represent musical notes she has to sing, but the only problem is they don't know in what key. That's when she remembers the sound that played after they shot the bullseye and realizes it was a C major. With less than 8 minutes left, she sings a song based on the numbers, and as soon as she's done, the door opens up. They've beaten the third level, making that three challenges down with five more to go, but things are about to get much worse. Entering the final room, the Game Master tells the players they have 20 minutes to vote on who will leave through the exit, and to help them come to a quick decision, they've been provided knives to murder the competition. It's clear there can only be one survivor, and the nerd suddenly points his gun at them, ordering the others to stay where they are. He's determined to win at any cost, and demands they choose him to leave the room. The guy is ready to kill them if they don't agree, and it's terrifying, but the boy reassures his teammate he's got a brilliant idea. Approaching the nerd, he drops to his knees and begs for his life. The girl thinks it's pathetic and can't believe this is his plan, but then he winks at her. Realizing this is a trick, she joins him on the floor and tells the nerd they'll do whatever he wants. With her choice made, a door opens up and the guy walks out of the room, thinking he's escaped the game, but that was his biggest mistake. As soon as the door closes, the other players hear him scream in agony before he suddenly goes quiet. Okay, these players just got lucky. The boyfriend and this girl here are doing a great job solving the puzzles, but the problem is that they're both forgetting this is a death game. If I were in this situation and saw that this man can hit a bullseye dead center using only a single shot, there's no way I'm going to let him keep the gun and bring it into the next room. In a death game, weapons can make the difference between winning and losing, so we need to take away his advantage as soon as possible. If it were me, I would try to convince him that this room might have a code that we will need for the next challenge, and we should disassemble the gun to check for clues. It's important to do this before moving on, because if he realizes that the next challenge can be solved without additional information, then he won't hand over the gun. As long as there are unknowns, he's going to be more likely to cooperate, and we can confiscate the pieces so he isn't able to shoot us if things get competitive. Now, the boyfriend here wasn't thinking ahead to realize this, but to his credit, he did figure something out that nobody else was able to. Since they've already been through three challenges, it seemed obvious that this was the fourth and final game. Game. That's why the nerd threatened them, so they would vote for him to be the winner, but what he didn't realize was that the last two rooms were actually one challenge combined. The boyfriend figured this out by observing that the first room showed them rules and a hint together, but the second and third room showed them separately. Based on the way this information was organized, it demonstrates there's one more challenge left to play. If this is actually the third out of four total games, then walking through that door means you're quitting. This is why the nerd got killed, and now they'll get to advance to the final challenge. The kid searches for the entrance of the next game, when the wall suddenly opens up and reveals the last room for them to enter. Walking inside, the survivors approach the screen and are told they will be playing rock, paper, scissors. They will have to press one of these buttons to make their choice, and the game master starts a countdown. At the last second, the girl slams her hand on the scissors button, but realizes that the boy hasn't selected anything. He points out they were never told to make a decision at the same time, and the girl is shocked. But he quickly chooses rock and wins the game. That's four challenges down, with four more to go. The Game Master congratulates him for thinking outside the box and rewards him nine points for finding a way to cheat. With the round coming to an end, the kid says goodbye to his teammate, but he doesn't realize there are still four challenges left, and they're about to get a lot more deadly. When the boy wakes up, he finds himself in a park and is surprised to see his girlfriend. She tells him they're in the middle of a date, but he can't figure out if any of this is real. They decide to stop by a restaurant, and at the end of the meal, the waitress comes with their bill. He's about to pay when, surprisingly, the woman takes his membership card from the game and charges the card without a problem. Confused, the boy asks her to check how much is on it, and she reveals there's over 899,000 yuan on the card. The boy realizes that since he won 9 points in the death game, he's been rewarded 900,000 yuan, and that means it wasn't a dream at all. Excited, he goes on a shopping spree with his girlfriend, and it seems like everything is fine, but that's when it's interrupted by his friend suddenly arriving. He came out of nowhere, and the kid confronts him, wanting to know how they escaped the death game, but the guy has no idea what he's talking about. Something is wrong, and the boy notices that everything around him is now frozen in time. None of this is real, and that's when a portal appears in front of him. Determined to save his girlfriend, he walks through it, entering a dark void where a voice warns him he's already spent two and a half points, before taking him to the next game. On the other side, several players are already waiting for him, and it will take everything he has to survive this challenge. The Game Master announced 
announced that for this challenge, their only objective is to leave this place alive. The winners will be rewarded 10 points, while those who fail will lose 8. But there's a catch. The announcer tells the kid he has an optional side mission of killing player number 2 here, and if he does, he'll be rewarded 5 extra points. Looking at him closely, he notices the man picking up a hidden knife, and realizes that every player has been made the same offer. That's when this girl introduces herself, revealing that this is her second time playing, but the others warn her to keep quiet. No one can be trusted in this game, and any information could be used against her, but player number 2 offers to work with the girl so they can win together. Interrupting, this woman argues that they should all split up into teams of 3, and it sounds like a good idea, but soon, 5 people are going to get brutally killed. Okay, this is about to become a bloodbath. The stakes are getting a lot higher, and the Game Master is now incentivizing the players to kill each other for extra points. It's terrifying, but the interesting thing is that now, we can start observing everyone's interactions to figure out what they're going to do. Before, the primary objective was to solve the puzzle, and even if some of them were designed for specific players, there was still an element of teamwork. Now, there are only two reasons to team up, and the first is to make sure there are enough meat shields around you to give us a better chance of surviving. The second reason is to make sure that the person you have been instructed to kill is close to you so that we can murder them when it becomes necessary. This one detail helps us figure out who is an immediate threat because if they're trying to form a team with you, there's a higher chance that you are their target. At this point, nobody is going to trust anyone, but there's one great way to solve this problem. If it were me, I would pick up one of these bricks, find my target, and kill them right in the middle of the group. The others will be shocked, but I'd explain that this was the target the game assigned to me, and it will earn their trust because I don't need to kill anyone else. The benefit here is that I'll instantly get 5 points, but it will also signal to whoever has me as their target that I'm too dangerous to mess with. It's important to remember that this side mission is optional, and if this is the first thing I do without hesitation, it establishes dominance and creates more fear in the other players. This strategy might sound extreme because killing someone in cold blood is not an easy thing to do, but there's one important detail here that we can't ignore. Before we entered this portal, everything froze in time, and it became clear we were experiencing a simulated reality. The kid was convinced that his girlfriend was real, but the entire thing was just being controlled by the Game Master. If they have this kind of technology, then we have every reason to think that this death game is still in that simulated reality, and that would mean that even these other players are likely to be NPCs. With this in mind, I would have no problem killing as many players as I need in order to win this death game, because it's very likely they aren't real. This theory becomes even more convincing if we remember at the very beginning when his girlfriend first disappeared, the only two people who knew of her existence were these two kids. Even videos of her were changed to another person, and this would be impossible unless the world you were living in was a complete simulation. That's why if we kill someone in cold blood right before the game starts, it will shock the NPCs so they don't know how to react, and this might be the best way to gain the upper hand. The others decide to stick together, but as they're heading out, this guy reveals that all the players have a secret mission, and his is to murder the boyfriend. The kid doesn't know if he's telling the truth, and agrees that it's safer to split up. Walking into the building, he finds himself in a hallway when he notices someone following him. It's the girl, and she begs to let her join him. Reluctantly, he agrees, but as they continue walking, he accuses her of lying about being a new player, and the girl admits that this is actually her sixth game. Suddenly, the girl feels a presence behind her and turns around in shock as a ghost walks across the hall. They think it might be a clue to the exit, but the kid suddenly pushes the girl against the wall, demanding to know if he's her target. Terrified, the girl confesses that she's been told to kill him, but isn't planning on betraying anyone. He doesn't know if he can fully trust her, but that's when the girl reveals a shocking secret. She explains that if they finish a game with less than zero points, then they'll be kicked out of the tournament and die in exactly one week. Neither of them can afford to lose, and with their lives on the line, their only hope of survival is following the ghost to the exit. The players follow the ghost until they find themselves in an abandoned prison and look around the area for more clues. The girl is terrified and suggests that there might be zombies in here when a hand suddenly falls on her shoulder. The kid quickly grabs it, discovering that it belongs to a mannequin and reassures the girl there aren't any monsters. But they're about to find out she's completely right. They search the second floor for the exit, but there's no sign of one anywhere. Suddenly, a bloodied hand falls on the girl's shoulder and she turns around to see a zombie standing right behind her. It lunges for the girl but the kid manages to save her at the last second. They run for their lives, but as they make their way through the prison, even more zombies start appearing in the arena. They're trapped, and the only hope they have for survival is going back downstairs. 
fighting off the monsters, the boy distracts them and gives his teammate time to escape. They're both headed for the gate on the other side of the room, but when he finally manages to climb down, he realizes this was his biggest mistake. The girl has already closed the gate and locked it shut, but before she leaves, the guy warns her that she's going the wrong way. Without any other options, the boy fights with the zombie horde until he manages to take them all out. But that's when the girl walks back to the gate, and she's completely confused. Somehow, she circled back around to where she started, and realizing the building layout has suddenly changed, she has no choice but to open the gate to find the real exit. That's when the Game Master reveals to the boyfriend that this place will change based on what they say, and it might become impossible to beat if they're not careful. It's shockingly unfair, but now that he knows the secret, he has a better chance to escape. The boyfriend walks out of the prison determined to survive, and that makes five challenges down with three more to go. Okay, this game is getting out of hand. These kids thought they would only need to find a way to escape, but had no idea that they would be fighting off a horde of zombies. It's terrifying, but if I'm being honest, it shouldn't have taken them this long to figure out that they were doing it to themselves. Earlier, the girl panicked and thought she was being attacked by a zombie, but when she turned around, they saw it was clearly a mannequin. Then, zombies started showing up from everywhere, and it's so specific that there's no way you would think this was a coincidence. Now, the truth is, if they were paying attention to how the game was responding, they could have used this to their advantage. It's important to point out that earlier in the Rock, Paper, Scissors challenge, the Game Master went out of his way to congratulate this kid for betting the rules in his favor, and even rewarded him three extra points. That means strictly following the rules in this death game is not going to work in your favor, and will probably get you killed. For this reason, it's important we study the rules to figure figure out what it doesn't specify, and use every loophole we can think of as a strategy to win. Now you might be thinking that if the game will adapt to whatever we say, then we could just declare we've won the game, but this isn't going to work. The Game Master would have to be an idiot to let this happen, and wouldn't be entertaining for him. We know that he wants the game to be competitive, and that's why the smarter approach is to use the rules and make it harder for the other players. She's the one who brought these zombies into the situation, and that's why if they were me, I would declare that these zombies only attack girls. Since it doesn't break the game, it's fair to assume we'll be allowed to influence the scenario this way, and while all the zombies are chasing after her, we'll be free to wander off without risking our lives and look for the exit. We could even extend this to all the players on the other team and declare that the zombies have started attacking them as well. We can't can't be sure it will work, but as long as we're using the rules to think outside of the box and make it harder for everyone else, we'll have a much better chance of winning the game. Later, they arrive at an industrial freezer and look around for an exit, but there doesn't seem to be any doors. The girl suggests that the game is trying to freeze them to death, but the kid quickly stops her from saying anything more. One wrong word could kill them all, and that's when they notice an opening to the hallway, but the door is closing shut. He runs as fast as he can and manages to get to the other side, but quickly realizes the girl is stuck. Her foot is caught on a hole, and she's trapped. Acting quickly, he slides back into the freezer and the door closes, leaving him with no way out. Approaching the girl, the kid frees her leg from the trap and scolds her for being careless. She can't believe that he came back to help, and this one action has earned her loyalty forever. With both players now able to move, the kid tries to exploit the game's mechanics, saying that he's incredibly strong and tries to break down the exit door but falls to the ground in pain. He doesn't understand why his plan isn't working, but that's when the Game Master reveals that the difficulty actually increases based on what they say. This challenge is even more unfair than he realized and warns the girl to be careful what she says or else they'll never escape. The only problem is that they don't know what to do, but the Game Master decides to reward the kid for his determination and sends them a hint. Suddenly, the ghost appears and walks over to this hole, making it clear it's something important. Looking inside, the boy discovers a switch at the bottom and pulls on it. A hidden keypad pops out of the wall, and the girl realizes that the position of these bullet holes represent the numbers for a password. But the only problem is that they don't know what the order is. With no other clues, they have everything they need to solve this puzzle. And that's when the boy notices the cracks overlapping each other, realizing he can figure out the order they were shot in. He inputs the numbers into the keypad and opens the door to the freezer, making that six challenges down with two more to go. They make it back into the hallway and the girls relieved to escape, but that's when she remembers something terrifying. In an earlier game, there was someone who lost, even though they had the most points. It proves that there are hidden requirements to winning this game, but if they can figure out how the players are scored, they can make it out alive. That's when the boyfriend has an idea, and realizes he could earn more points by completing his side mission without confronting the other players. Meanwhile, on the opposite end of the hallway, the other team hears someone screaming in pain. Realizing he could take advantage of the situation, this guy turns to the group and tells them all a lie. He explains 
explains that the Game Master has confirmed that the target he's supposed to kill has just died, and that means his side mission is complete. Player number two here doesn't believe him, thinking that he's hiding something, but the others begin to defend the man. They argue that he's way more suspicious than player number five, and the woman makes it clear they don't trust him. Furious, he pulls out his knife and insists he's innocent, but that was his worst mistake. Seeing his opportunity, this guy pushes the other woman forward, and the man turns around at the last second. She just ran into his knife and drops to the floor dead. Okay, these players are way too gullible. This guy just told everyone that his target died and the mission is complete, but there's something they're all forgetting. The side mission is only fulfilled if you kill the player, but not if that player dies from something else. In this case, it doesn't make sense that he would earn five extra points, so we have to assume that he isn't telling the truth. If I were the game master, I would have given him a new target to kill because this would make the game more interesting. They would realize he's manipulating them and the woman might still be alive. The lesson to learn here is that in a death game, when someone is telling you information that can't be proven, we have to evaluate whether or not it's consistent with what a game master would allow. And if it sounds too convenient, it's probably because it is. Now as for this kid, saving someone in a death game is one of the worst mistakes you could possibly make. The more players there are, the lower your chances are of winning. Because even if you're working together, we have to remember that she's still your enemy. This is not a team game, and he's forgotten the only reason he's here is because he's trying to save his girlfriend. So the longer we keep this girl alive, the further we are from accomplishing our mission. Having said that, there's one important detail here that we can't ignore. Earlier, the game master said he was impressed with his determination and decided to reward them with a hint. This is incredibly suspicious because the whole point of a death game is either for entertainment or to test their skills. Giving them hints completely undermines both of these reasons, so if the game master is helping him advance, then we have to assume he has a different motive. With this in mind, we should try to take advantage of his kindness and see how far it will go. This is really important, because normally the designer of a death game would not interfere with a player's chances of winning. Rewarding someone for their determination doesn't make sense, because everyone wants to stay alive. So the only conclusion to draw is that for some reason, this kid is being protected. That's why I would declare that this game is too difficult to win, and explain that I was about to break up with my girlfriend anyways, so there's no point in continuing to look for her. This is a test to see how the game master will respond, because if we're about to die here, and he decided to help us, then logically there's nothing stopping him from helping us every single time we're in danger. By forcing the Game Master to intervene and reveal his true motivations, we can figure out what he really wants and it will be a lot easier to escape this place. That's when this woman tries to disarm the man, but he pushes her against the wall, determined to kill her. To everyone's surprise, the other guy helps finish her off and shoves the knife straight into her chest. With the two players remaining, the men make it clear to each other that they've completed their optional missions and decide to team up so they can leave. Player number two is about to walk away, but suddenly the other man stabs him in the back, killing the guy instantly. Meanwhile, the boyfriend receives a notification that he's completed his optional mission and realizes the players on the other team have been killed, but that's when the game master starts talking to him. It warns him that there's going to be a surprise challenge just around the corner, and that's when the girl notices a spiked wall racing straight towards them. They'll be crushed to death if they don't get out of here and run for their lives. Making their way through the halls, they jump through these walls with cutouts in them, but as they get further ahead, the floor starts tilting. The game is changing shape to try and kill them, but with all their strength, they leap forward, holding on tightly to a ledge. The boy helps his teammate climb onto the platform and asks the girl to pull him to safety, but that's when she realizes this is the perfect opportunity to complete her side mission. She was supposed to kill him this entire time, but the girl remembers how he saved her from freezing to death and instead of pushing him off, decides to save his life. The boy thanks her for returning the favor and reassures the girl this will all be over soon. The game has been testing their ability to work together, and since they survived, the finish line shouldn't be that far ahead. That makes seven challenges down, with only one more to go. Later, they find themselves in a fancy ballroom, and it looks like nobody else has made it this far. But suddenly, an axe comes flying straight for their heads. They dodge it at the last second, and that's when player number one approaches them from the shadows. He reveals that the girl is his target and demands the kid step away, but the boy refuses to leave his teammate alone. Furious, the guy starts attacking him, and the kid barely manages manages to fend him off. The other player is clearly the better fighter, and if they don't do something fast, he's going to kill them both. He grabs his axe, ready to deliver the finishing blow, when all of a sudden, a bunch of playing cards go flying through the air and slice his face open. Turning around, the group sees that player number five has come, and he makes it clear he will protect the kid at any cost. There's no way the other guy can take them all at once, and he decides to leave, looking for the exit to escape this place. With player number one gone, the boy asks the man if he knows anything about his girlfriend, but instead of telling him, he proposes 
as they make a truce so they can finally finish this game. Gathering downstairs, the survivors see player number one approach this altar at the center of the room and put his hand on a sensor, but this was his biggest mistake. He thinks that he's beaten the game, but suddenly every cell in his body starts to die, killing him right on the spot. It's horrifying to the others, but player number five isn't phased and throws a card at the man as he vanishes into smoke. He reminds the survivors that this game is testing their teamwork, and if they touch the sensors together, they should be safe. Okay, this guy was an idiot. For some reason, he touched this altar by himself, but completely forgot that everything is dangerous when you're in a death game. Being the first person to do anything is always a risk, and that's why it's a lot smarter to convince others to explore the game for you. If he was taking the threat seriously, he would have waited for the rest of the players to participate and learn from their mistakes instead of the other way around. As for these kids, they've been the luckiest players in the game. This guy was about to kill them with an axe, but they were saved at the last second by player number 5. What's strange is that nobody would do this in a death game unless they had an ulterior motive. Now, the man just explained that if everyone touches the sensors, they'll all be safe, but if he's lying, he could easily pull his hand away at the last second and the rest of us will die just like this guy did. As terrifying as this is, it doesn't make sense that he would save us, only to trick us into dying moments later, so trusting him is the right decision for the time being. The good news is, this might be something we can use to our advantage. If the man is telling the truth, then nobody can escape this place alone, and that means we can negotiate terms before agreeing to help. Now, there's a strong chance he'll betray us as soon as we give him what he wants, and that's why if it were me, I would make him get rid of all of his weapons and clothes so it's impossible for him to hurt anyone. The man isn't going to be happy about it, but I would rather trap him here until he agrees than to risk getting murdered. It's not sus if it saves your life, and this is the best way to make sure we're able to work together without getting caught with our pants down. With no other way to escape, the players put their hands on the device at the same time and unlock these massive doors at the end of the room. That's when the Game Master congratulates them for winning and reveals they now have two choices. They can either walk through the doors to leave the game or go back to the lobby and complete their side mission. The girl heads for the exit and encourages the boy to join her, but suddenly, a card slices her throat open. She's just been killed, and the girl tumbles through the doorway while the man gloats. He only kept her around to finish this game and walks out of the room, leaving the kid alone. With the survivors cleared, the game master announces that the boyfriend now has 21 and a half points and teleports him out of the arena. That makes eight challenges down, with the dead girl, the boyfriend, and the man as the winner. Overwhelmed with guilt, he goes back to his dorm room and breaks down. The the boy has lost the only person he could trust, but he's interrupted when the doorknob turns and realizes someone is trying to break in. Walking over to the door, the kid pulls it open and looks around, but nobody's in the hallway. It seems like he was imagining things, but just as he's about to step back inside, someone grabs him from behind. The boyfriend is kidnapped and taken to a mansion where he meets a familiar face as someone steps out of the swimming pool. It's the girl from the last game, and somehow she's still alive. They talk in private, and the girl explains that the only reason she's still alive is because the game ended before she was killed. The girl knows a lot more than he realized, and asks if there's any way she can help him find his girlfriend. That's when she tells him something shocking, and suggests that the Die Now organization kidnapped his girlfriend to force him to join the death game. She doesn't know where they're hiding her, but has an idea that could help him. Showing him this device, the girl explains it allows the players to buy anything they want and suggests he buy more time. The game only gives them 6 hours of rest before each challenge, but with a few extra days, he'll have enough time to find out where his girlfriend is being kept. Deciding to go back to his dorm room, he leaves the mansion and finds a woman waiting for him. She introduces herself as a bodyguard the girl hired to protect him and insists they should leave immediately. The boy is grateful for all the help and heads inside the car with no idea his life is in danger. Driving away from the mansion, the kid asks his bodyguard what she knows about the death game organization, but they have bigger problems to deal with. Three cars have been following them, and the woman is certain they're hunting him down. She drives out of the city and tries to lose their trail, but it's useless. With no other options, the bodyguard gets out to take on the assassins and guns them down, but there's too many to fight off. Outnumbered, the woman takes the kid into the plaza and hides him, waiting for the perfect time to strike. As soon as the men get close, the bodyguard ambushes them and brutally takes takes the men down, but that was her biggest mistake. Suddenly, one of the injured assassins throws a grenade at the boyfriend, and she only has seconds to rescue him before it explodes. This death game isn't over, and soon, he'll discover that the fate of humanity rests on his shoulders. But what do you think? How would you be die now? Let me know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, leave a like and subscribe, and check out the How To Beat playlist for more videos like this. Until next time, have a damn good day.